like we always do about this time. Perfect. and it's 11 degrees nice and fresh this morning sun is out I feel like I've got a bit of a cold coming which is a bit rubbish but whatever <clears throat> it's all them stinky people at car shows that stand too close to you but it is a uh, just doing a magic trick it's a Monday morning on our way to work, I've got to stop at the shops first. I'm gonna stock up on the old cold and flu so I can dose myself up, not feel sh rubbish all day. Um, subscribe account, 990, 10 away. That's five, two of those. We are nearly, nearly there. 10 people, 10 lucky people. Come on, let's get it. Let's have it. And then we're doing the toolbox tour, a kicker giveaway, a snap-on giveaway of mine. Um, and then we're, the main focus um, is now get the Lotus engine in. So probably this weekend, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can borrow the frame. I'm gonna get my people together. And hopefully with this week, we should get that 10. And then I can stream directly off the GoPro. So the pictures and the quality and everything else will be better. Um, we can use the media mod so the mic will be better. We're in 4K. So it should be a whole load better experience for you guys. Um, and get the engine in, do what we need to do to get the thing running. Um, I had a little nod from the Dan, the guy that runs the Queen Square Meets in Bristol that we always go to. Um, he's got a big meat coming up and there's loads of lotuses applied already. Now, he loves my lotus um, and he wants me to bring it. He knew that the engine had gone uh, and that I basically was rebuilding it or doing something with it and he's basically invited me along. He wants me there. So now mission is, chase is done. Let's get the lotus on the road and, and working again. So that's coming up this week. Um, today I've got it's a Honda day today. I've got a Civic in first thing. I've got to fit the guy's own radio. Um, he's bought a stereo. Didn't know what fascia kit to buy, so I've supplied the fascia kit for him and I'll fit the radio and everything else. Um, and then I've got Honda CRV, CRV, HRV, one of them. <coughs> I think it's a CRV. Um, I, her son, it's a lovely old lady. Her son had bought her a camera off of eBay. Uh, she had a, well, she didn't have an accident, but damage happened to her car last week and she needed the footage because something fell off a truck and turns out the camera wasn't even recording. You have to get in and manually start record on the camera. I didn't even know that, um, but apparently it just doesn't come on and record to the SD card. Every trip you get in, you've got to press a button so it records. I mean, that's just bloody useless. So, uh, so we're taking that out today or we're leaving it in there so he thinks it's still working because she said he'd be upset that, you know, his gift is rubbish. Um, but we're gonna put in a Kenwood dash cam for her so it actually does record stuff. She doesn't need to turn it on, it will just work. Um, so I'm on my way to work. I will speak to you in a bit when I get there. Just forgot we're going to the shops. We're gonna go back around the roundabout and off to the shops, see you in a bit. Quick stop at Tesco's is done. Got some medicine for the day just in case. I got stopped at the checkout. Apparently you can't buy four uh, cold, and cold and flu things. You can only buy two. <clears throat> for fear if I want to top myself on some really expensive cold and flu stuff. That's bizarre, isn't it? What a way to go. That's when you know your life is that bad that you could have gone out in a blaze of glory, but 
instead you chose Tesco's value cold and flu so long cruel world <laughs> let me one pound fifties worth of chemical <clears throat> I get it you know they've got to be they've got to be safe with it and stop people doing it but remove the warning labels let the gene pool cleans itself cleanse itself should I say the world will be a happier place although the fail army on uh, YouTube would have little little to post because there'd just be intelligent people left but we're on our way to work catch you in a bit bye so we got the first one in this morning little Honda Civic <clears throat> got to change out the radio for a Sony so we're getting rid of this thing here putting in a fascia kit so we start by taking out all this center console and then getting the radio out. I'm going to put the microphone obviously up in the middle. Digital aerial on the windscreen. So I'll touch base for you in a bit when this one's done. So now we're going to fit up our radio, obviously we're changing from that with a fascia kit. Put in that Sony. So that's our replacement. So we've got to transfer the air vents over the hazard switch and we'll leave the radio in there. Let's get you up in the air a little bit so you can see. There we go. Right, so first things first. We will undo the screws for the air vent and the hazards. Take that off of there. Now, when you're doing this kind of stuff, sometimes you've got to watch the uh, plastics around the hazard switch. Obviously, these things are mass-produced. Make sure that your switch is free and it's not binding on the plastic. Sometimes they do. Give it a little test tickle. If you need to make any adjustments, make an adjustment. That's nice and free. Can we get the air vents out? These tiny little screws. That's pretty much all we need from that. I can go in the bin. Forward slash back in the car. And then stick our air vents on. Make sure they click in. And they sit level and flush. And we get our two little holding screws back in. Just be gentle with this. You don't necessarily need to use a power tool, I only do it because it's quicker. 
not a wheel nut, you're not trying to gun it up. Then we get our side fixings with a little bag of screws. Now, these things have little cutouts and they're gonna locate onto these three little stays. Screw them in and that is gonna support our radio. So we get obviously one, two, three. What I like to do with these because of the cutout is put your screws in first a little bit. Just get them bound in so you're not trying to fiddle with four things at the same time. basically just add pressure this way to pull them into the holes. It can be quite fiddly, just take your time doing it. I'm not snapping anything off. Talk it up. If you, if you do it too tight, it'll only push it in. Here we our radio. I haven't supplied this one. This is the customer's own equipment. We're going to need the screws to put it in the side of the unit. Obviously use the right screws, don't use self tappers of any uh, type because you'll short the board out internally. This looks like a second hand unit. We'll take out the cage because we're not using that on this installation. Customer gets that back. Well, um, put a cable tie on there, that's useful. So, this is full double the in screen with a half chassis. We're back on, that was my mum. <laughs> uh, right, so what I tend to do is get the fascia in first, the little surround, and then use the unit to back onto the fascia. So it kind of gives you a flush idea of where you want to go with the stereo at the back. And then in doing so, you do up the screws, obviously with your radio in, and you get it in the right position. And it, you end up with a nice flat looking radio when you've got it all in the right location. Again, don't do these things too tight, you don't need to. The plastic is quite brittle, it will fracture, but it's pinned so it will hold it. And then just have a look at your unit, make sure you're level with everything, which we kind of are there. could probably come a smidge forward on that side. I 
I am a perfectionist, so I am going to do that. Just, just a little bit. So it lines up flat there. Keep my fingers across the gap and you can kind of feel when it's there. There we go, that's better. And there's our unit installed. So we've got our air vents in, they operate. We've got a hazard switch, that's not binding. And we've just got our cables. Yeah, it's blatantly a second hand unit. Chocolate locks give it away. Where the hell are these things? And we've got cut loom. Handbrake earth is not attached. So we'll get that onto the uh, black wire now. I have to extend that blue wire as well because that's not. Got one one half of it there on the ISO and the other half of it there. So we'll have to put on a connector for that as well. Once I've sorted this, let's get those done, let's get some connectors. done in one hit see and then you're not faffing around with it in the car it is easier to do it on the bench you can use wire strippers for this but once you get long, like long in the tooth like me you know how much pressure you've got to use with a set of uh, side cutters that you don't ruin the cable that you're trying to attach to. while we're doing this up as well obviously be mindful that you might need a, a power feed for your aerial amplifier obviously we're putting on the uh, what would be the aerial output or amp remote or pecan or you know so we'll add it into the same bit so we've got like one nice neat connection for our amp to turn on electric aerial Ratchet that one. So that wasn't a good, good crimp. Maybe that's better. Cool. So we've got our Sony loom now all repaired and how we want it, with our factory handbrake earth bulleted in. We've got our aerial booster on the aerial connection now onto the repaired amp remote output then we'll take our honda loom obviously this is going to go iso to iso on there we've got a steering control harness which is going to our little canvas reader our little box of tricks and then our designated patch lead for whichever unit we're going to use obviously this is sony so we have got a wired controller, which is the blue one. That's going to be our steering control harness. And it's always worth just checking. Sony and Pioneer are the same anyway. 
gives you a little brief description about what steering control harnesses you're going to keep and retain. Stay in there. I'm going to put the cage and the surround back in his box. And his warranty card. Uh, we'll get our Sony plug in the stereo. One thing that can be done. We'll get our steering control harness in the stereo, because that can be done. And our aerial input in the Sony stereo, because that can be done. This stuff here we're not going to use. So if you want to be a bit, a bit proper, cut it off at different lengths so it doesn't short out together. We'll put some tape on it. that you're not using that have a power output like mute which could earth out on the chassis make sure they're covered up and then we've got to put in our microphone DAV aerial that's into the glove box and that's the unit wired ready to go so we'll get that done so there we go Honda's all done microphone at the top there digital aerial over there steering controls are all working still retains the date time and temperature at the top there we need to reset that for the customer but that's it this one's done on to the next now we've got a dash cam and a honda crv put one of these kenwood ones in this thing is magic A few inches later. <clears throat> so there we go, this one's done. So this camera here was a present from her son. And it never recorded the things that she wanted it to record. Although it shows a front and rear view mirror. I did put a camera in the back on the back window there. But we've decided to go for one of these. One of my little Kenwoods it does work and it works all the time it's automatic so you don't have to touch anything whereas this one you had to turn it on so a bit better camera and uh, no fussing around that's it Monday's done snap on Tuesday tomorrow 990 subscribers 10 to go thanks for watching see you tomorrow Thank you.